So welcome to the third and final part in the mini-series on tone compressors in Darktable. So filmic and sigmoid and how will they work, why we need them. I will make uh, at a later date a complete video on um, the, comp the, the settings, all the settings, all the sliders in filmic and in sigmoid, compare them on similar photos and try to help you decide which one you prefer, which one you need to use and in what cases you um, would use one over the other. Um, well, let's finish then. Follow me. Now, the way I see dark table working for the exposure compensation, which we sometimes refer to as changing exposure, which is not quite the same thing. Um, exposure compensation. Let's say if I put plus two, kind of I double and then double again. And the way I see it, if the data has, has kind of moved up, if all the information has been multiplied by two, and again by two, that multiply by four, then the reference point hasn't changed. And therefore, we'll get this 18% which goes to gray, which, which will correspond on my image to um, a place that's darker in the um, whole range of light values. And if half of, of the kind of the 18%, the middle gray is there, then a lot of the, the information will be over and that's overexposing. So that kind of fits in with the um, idea I have of what the exposure compensation does. And if on the other hand, I move my information, no, so this stays. So there would be a kind of, for each camera, there would be a kind of a fixed point in the light range and that does not move and we move our data in kind of in reference to that now i did read in the documentation that exposure takes information from um, a white point in the camera but it's camera dependent so that would confirm that there is something that is fixed a fixed value and we're moving in reference to that. Um, so actually choosing your exposure compensation means moving. So here if I'm underexposing means that I'm moving this way, then that means that my 18% mid gray would be there. So I'd have very little above it, a lot of the amplitude of light below it. And that would be kind of underexposed. Well, the photo would be darker than previously and um, well I did a little test on uh, on a photo in dark table for that go into uh, dark table again uh, let's close filmic open exposure the exposure is set the exposure compensation is set at 0.7 seems to be pretty much standard in the cameras I've used it's not actually measuring anything I think this is just set um, so what I was saying is it must take information from the raw black and white points to maybe some other stuff takes from the camera just to get something on the screen. And it's up to us to decide where the correct exposure is, which is where in the range of values we want the mid gray to be. Uh, we can take this color picker, well, it's not a color picker, it's a picker. Now it's measuring here from the whole screen, which means that it takes the average values of all the luminosity and uh, of all the luminosities and decides that that, that average is set to 18% um, or, you know, mid-gray. Well, I'll call it mid-gray. And to do that, it needs to shift everything up 1.129 EV. What we can do is if we could change that picker and change to a smaller area. So you see it's gone down. The exposure compensation is now 0 0.7, which is a bit lower. Look at the color picker, we're in LCH, and um, if I, um, I'll just put the, sometimes I remember to put this pointer color thing on. Um, if I have a look, the average of the luminosities in this area where I did the exposure measurement will be 50. And if I measure, if I take a measure in a darker zone, then, the picture will be brighter. The exposure compensation has gone up a bit because the average of the colors 
in here will have a luminosity of 50 round here. Um, these obviously have gone brighter. And if I take a very bright area to measure in, let's take one of the bright areas, then did I just see it go? There we are. I've taken the average um, luminosity value in this square will be 50%. So it is a way of measuring. It doesn't mean it's the best one. But that is not how we do it. Um, if you want to do it properly, just remind you, I showed this in a previous video, is you press on the B, command B here, that's a light bulb, and you set this, you eyeball it, comparing, this is the brightest, it's the comparison, so we know where white is, our, our eyes do not know what white is, um, without reference, so we can set that and say, well that looks good, that's my exposure, and done, and then press on this again, that's if you want to do it, but that was to explain what that reference point is that we find in Filmic. Now, the last thing I have to address in the video is actually the, the whole point of the video is to talk about Filmic and Sigmoid. So Filmic and Sigmoid, Sigmoid, um, have some, uh, the main role, they have two roles, is to get the exposure fitted the exposure fitted into the screen as I choose it to be. So here what I can say is that I want the dark point. Let's say that here between the midpoint I chose and let's go to the top part here. Let's say here I have minus 2.5 EV and here I have plus 3 EV. If I type these numbers into Filmic, then that means that the darkest pixel of the photo will go to black and the lightest will go to white, which can be a very common choice for a photographer. If I choose in Filmic to artificially say the white point I want it at plus 5 EV, that means that the 5 EV will go to 100%, which means that my 3 EV will go somewhere around there. Now, it's not linear, it won't be parallel lines. We have an S curve. I mean, everything has to fit in. It's all squeezed in, like with a, you know, getting your foot in a small shoe. Um, and if I choose, so that means that um, the lightest point of my photo won't be as bright as the brightest point on the screen which can be a choice. If I choose, um, I'm doing this with the, with the the lights, but with the darks, it's the same thing. If I choose on Filmic to plus, plus 2 EV, that means that this point will go on white, which means that all these, all this zone here, will be pure white overexposed, which could, could be a choice. If you've got a black and white photo, you want to overexpose the sky. That can be a choice as well. And that is how film it works. And to a certain extent, Sigmoid will do the same thing. And we'll come back to the differences between filmic and Sigmoid maybe in another episode. Um, let's try that. Let's give it a try. So back to the butterfly. I've opened filmic. If I go on auto tune levels, it will tell me that compared to the gray point here, which is the zero that I chose, I can actually put here the references. You see zero on the file, on the, um, on the raw file. The data is 18% of the display, which is the, the, the mid gray. Um, I can also uh, map this differently percentage of camera. Um, and the dynamic range here, which is very similar to what I was showing you on my little drawing. I have the scene is here, it's below the display is above. Okay, so zero goes to 18% gray, which is mid gray. And I have chosen um, to have plus two and 3.5, which is the 1.96 and 3.5. So I'm actually stretching out the histogram. I get this very contrasty look. If I 
expand this a little bit. I'm saying that let's say a four EV plus four, I'm mapping to a hundred. Um, so it's less contrasty now because I've expanded here the um, or what I will call the dynamic range of the scene, my chosen, I'm actually choosing a dynamic range here, nothing to do with the actual dynamic range of the scene. And I can expand it on the other side. Um, so that now I have um, a much less contrasty photo uh, because I'm at minus nine EV. So I'm actually plotting the blacks at minus nine to zero. And if the darkest point of my photo, which is here, maybe it's only here. So I'm actually making it to kind of a dark gray and not a black. Whereas if I do this, then the darkest point here, which might be here, is actually pure black. That's what's happening. I have a lot of contrast here. Um, so the auto tune levels might work sometimes, not what I always use. Um, I would actually kind of wing it, just have a look what I'm doing, get a nice effect, bit of contrast, adjust it by sight, and that's what I'd do. Now, moving on to sigmoid. Now, here I've replaced filmic by sigmoid. Um, don't use both, it's one or the other. So, sigmoid comes. Um, like this, we have two controls that we're going to talk about today, contrast and skew. So we don't have directly white point and uh, black point. The contrast, if you look at the documentation, is the aggressivity of the compression. So if I move on to here, what it says, the aggressiveness, sorry, of the compression while leaving middle gray unchanged. So higher values require lower exposure to reach white. So higher values need lower um, dynamic range, lower uh, threshold to reach white. So more contrast. Um, if I look on this photo here, we might see it better. Um, here we have sigmoid. If I increase the contrast, I will reach white quicker here and overexpose. So that in a way is one way to a to get the black or white point done at the same time. Now the skew leans the compression towards the highlights or shadow, and we can transfer some contrast from shadows to highlights or vice versa without changing the contrast at middle gray. So the exposure to the middle gray, that's the middle of the curve, doesn't change. Positive skew flattens shadows and compresses highlights. Negative skews creates darker shadows and duller highlights. So here we should have um, whiter, more contrasty highlights, and here we'll get flatter highlights and darker darks. So not as easy to um, understand in a mathematical way. So, well, that doesn't really matter because what are we doing? We are actually processing a photo and we want it to look good. So we're not actually counting anything when we're processing photos. Um, we need to look at that, assess where we want the detail and where we want whites and blacks and the overall look of the image. What is written in the manu manual, which is very clear anyway, is that whether it's filmic or sigmoid, the majority of the work needs to be done in the um, linear part of the workflow, which is um, everything between the input color profile and um, sigmoid or filmic and everything after we're in display referred doesn't mean you can't do it it means you can have problems if you go too far so that's it for this video on um, the tone compression algorithms sigmoid and filmic now for the details the detailed comparison of the two um, I think you need to wait till the next video so give me a bit of time and I'll get right to work on it see you soon